Awesome. Thanks, folks. Okay, we'll get going then. Hello, and welcome to this session of the AI Specialist Study Group. My name is Katrina Wilson, and I will be leading today's overview on Prompt Builder, which now falls into the prompt engineering category of the exam. A little bit about me, I am an eight times Salesforce certified consultant at Optima, and I mainly play the role of business analyst on my projects, but I also specialize in change management. I try to dabble in business architecture, scrum mastery, and some product ownership. As for today, this session is part one of our four-part series on prompt engineering, where we will lay the groundwork for understanding how to effectively create and opt optimize prompts within Prompt Builder. Quick thank you for taking the time to be here today. And again, thank you to Meredith and Mariah for helping us with this study group. Of course, this probably looks familiar. Before I begin, a quick note that you should base your purchasing decisions on products and services that are currently available. I do not work for Salesforce and I do not speak for Salesforce. This is a presentation created for a study group to prepare for the certification. All right, so prompt builder or prompt engineering. Let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to start by reviewing what the exam will cover. So the prep guide notes that prompt builder slash prompt engineering, it now takes up a hefty 30% of the certification exam. So what we're going to do over the next few weeks is cover each of the outline topics, the bullets here, and split them apart, break them down, make them easy to understand. At a high level, you'll need to understand how to design, manage, and deploy your prompt templates. So design meaning template creation and grounding considerations. Manage has to do with the role identification and governance of that. Deployment has to do with the activation and execution of prompt templates. So for today's session, I'll focus on that first bullet point there, identifying when it's appropriate to use Prompt Builder. So Prompt Builder is designed to create reusable prompt templates for LLMs, those large language models. And prompt templates contain standardized prompts for quick and consistent AI-generated responses. So these can be incorporated into workflows to enhance efficiency. And as we know, generative AI is transforming both consumer and business tasks. Its ability to handle everything from book summaries to digital art creation, which I'll be using in this, by the way. Uh, however, the key to unlocking its potential lies in writing effective prompts and connecting those prompts to the right information. So Prompt Builder helps companies use AI at scale. It gives them the ability to create reusable and standardized prompts for large language models, and they provide us with consistent AI-generated responses. So these prompts also incorporate contextual information to make the results as relevant as possible. The most effective prompts are specific and detailed. So think of it like giving directions. If you said, go to the store versus take Main Street for two blocks, turn right at the traffic light, and the store will be on your left. The second version will clearly get you much better results. So for businesses, the challenge is how to create specific prompts that safely incorporate company data for each customer or product. So this is where Prompt Builder comes in. It helps us create reusable prompt template, templates that can securely connect business data with AI models, and that'll power automated workflows across the different departments. So this can do things, uh, handling com common tasks like email writing, drafting, content summary, summarization, that sort of a thing. And it can securely access Salesforce data via things like merge fields, flows, data clouds, and even Apex. Now on that note, let's talk a little bit about preparation and grounding. So as you may recall from some of the previous sessions, grounding provides context and specificity to prompt responses. So this helps incorporate the nuances of the business into the prompt result. So keep in mind that preparation here is key. The quality and completeness of the data you use is critical for generating accurate and relevant summaries and information. So if you use grounding data like record fields, flows or related lists that are incomplete, inaccurate, 
or missing crucial information, your output will reflect it. So prompts cannot compensate for poor data quality or missing data altogether. All right, so that aside, once your data has been prepared, you're ready to plan out what types of prompts you'd like to create by first defining your goals. So you'll need to consider which use cases are best suited. So Salesforce recommends that you approach prompt building by answering what they call the big four questions. These questions will give you the basic pieces of information you need to create useful responses. So who's involved? How are they related? That gives you your participants, relationships, and data. What are you trying to accomplish? You have to outline the goal, and this will help drive the instructions for the prompt. The context, so what sort of a setting is this? What type of tone and style? What's your brand voice? And what languages should we consider as a part of this? And then, of course, giving it proper constraints. So what are the limits, and how does that feed into the instructions? So essentially, Prompt Builder incorporates all of the good ingredients that make for a great template. Instructions, participants, context, goals, relationships, constraints, and relevant Salesforce data. So when you approach your prompt design with those ingredients in mind, you'll be able to create a rich prompt that includes everything your LLM will need to generate a specific and robust response. So here's an example using this technique to create a prompt which helps create a blog post for a bakery. You can see it describes a little bit about the roles involved. You're a cake decorator. It describes their customers. It describes the bakery itself and what the customers might be interested in, what sort of things they specifically want to call out. They have a sweet tooth and but they'd like to have a new line of cakes advertised. Remember that the more information you're able to provide in each of these key areas, the more customized the response will be. We also want to ensure that we give the LLM appropriate constraints via the limits you see here. OK, so here are some more examples of use cases. And essentially what it does is it excels at simplifying daily workflows by enabling creation, testing, customization, and management of your prompt templates. So there are often common business use cases, including email generation, field generation, grounding your prompt templates, and connecting them to Apex that this takes into account. So it makes it easier to draft and create content from everything from updates and announcements to personalized emails and field descriptions. So you'll also need to consider the type of prompt template that will be most appropriate for your goal. These are the primary four that are covered in the trail, but there are more outlined specifically on the Salesforce help article. I'll attach the link at the end here in the chat, and it's also in my PowerPoint. I'd encourage you to take a look at them. I'll cover them at a high level, though. So as you can see here, we have sales email prompt templates. So these have to do with emails for customers and products, and it pulls in that relevant data. Field generation prompt templates. So the specific thing I want to call out here is that they're editable, and you have to ensure that you have the page upgraded to dynamic forms to use them. So an example of this would be you're a cruise line activities planner and you want a field on the contact record so you know what your customer might want to do as a part of their cruise. And so you configure a field generation prompt template that says, okay, I'm gonna look at their interests, this field over here, going to look at their location, other demographic information, what kind of foods they have, if they have allergies, and I'm going to suggest an itinerary for them. And so it would pull that into this custom itinerary field and it would say, okay, they probably like to go snorkeling or they'd like to try local cuisine. Here's their day. And that director could go in, edit the field, say, I like it, it's a good start. I'm gonna add in some other things they've told me they like as well. So that one is customizable. The one to the right record summary is different because it's not editable. So it creates a rich text summary as well. In a sense, it's very similar, but it's giving you more of an overview and the user can't interact with it. 
And then on the right hand side, flex prompt template templates generate content for business purposes that are not covered by the other template types. So most of these, they will define the resources that are available to use when you select a prompt template. And this one is more flexible with you. That's why it's called the flex. So those are the top four. Let's look at the additional template types just quickly here. Campaign brief, pretty straightforward, helping you generate those with detailed campaign goals, message, audience, description, that sort of a thing. Case summary, it gives you a nice summary of the case object to include summary, issue, resolution. Contextual service replies and grounded service replies both have to do with context and grounding for live chat and messaging sessions. And we have knowledge answers. This has to do with customizing agent force agents and how it's tied to the knowledge base. Sales pitch coaching has to do with feedback for your sales reps. So it can be based on a transcript from a sales pitch or a role playing session to give them feedback on how to improve. Record prioritization, pretty straightforward there. And finally, work summary, similar to case summary, but it'll draft a summary issue and resolution in the wrap up component at the end of a voice call or a messaging session. Ooh, okay, clearly there are a lot of potential applications based on those template types. So let's take a quick look at a specific prompt using one of the templates. So this is an example using the sales email prompt template, and it invites the customer to a product event in their area with the help of merge fields and an Apex class. All right, let's talk about a specific and slightly fanciful use case. I took a page out of Meredith's book to generate this one. Meet Sarah. She's a custom cake artist who built her business from scratch. But uh, she was doing great. But as her business grew, so did her business challenges. So within a few years, she had become the CEO of a nationwide bakery business called Cloud Cakes. Not to be confused with Cloud Cakes, of course. Success had brought with it growing pains. Sarah's team was juggling customer inquiries, campaign planning, and product descriptions, all while trying to maintain their personal touch and efficiency. That is when Sarah discovered the beauty of Prompt Builder. So think of it as her digital sous chef. Just like how she crafts the perfect recipe by carefully selecting ingredients and adjusting measurements, Sarah learned to build AI prompts that would help her business grow. She immediately put it to use by automating their monthly sweet treats newsletter. Instead of spending hours drafting descriptions of their new seasonal offerings, she created a prompt template that pulled data directly from their product catalog. With a few clicks, detailed specs about their autumn harvest cake transformed into a mouthwatering description that perfectly captured cloud cakes warm, friendly brand voice. So Sarah made sure to give the prompt these key, the key ingredients that we mentioned earlier, instructions, participants, context, goals, relationships, constraints, and Salesforce data. The marketing team was particularly thrilled when Sarah showed them how to use Prompt Builder to create campaign briefs. For their upcoming summer, summer wedding showcase, they used a prompt template that pulled in previous campaign performance information, seasonal flavor offerings, and pricing tiers to quickly generate a comprehensive brief that normally would have taken days to assemble, much like their cakes. For product descriptions on their website, Sarah created a template that transformed basic information into engaging content, a simple inventory entry like Item 237, chocolate cake, raspberry filling, free tier, serve 75, became our triple chocolate dream cake, surrounds layer of, layers of vibrant raspberry filling with decadent chocolate sponge, creating a stunning three tier masterpiece, perfect for your special occasions, serves 75 chocolate enthusiasts. The best part, just like how Sarah tastes and adjusts her recipes, she could test and refine her prompts. If responses weren't quite right, maybe too formal or missing key details, she could tweak the instructions until they matched her brand's personal tone. 
soon, Sarah's prompts were operating at full speed, freeing her team up to focus on more complex issues and making it easier for Sarah to focus on what she loved most, creating spectacular cakes. So what I want you to take away from this is that Prompt Builder helps businesses create specialized AI interactions, and they're tailored to that organization's unique requirements, such as industry-specific responses and brand tone. So some key takeaways here. Prompt Builder creates predefined prompts that can be used across different scenarios to maintain consistency in response. The main types we covered are field generation, flex, sales email, and record summary, but there are several more. And use cases include everything from email drafting and generation, field generation, to grounding of prompts and campaign briefs. So quick pop quiz based on what you've quickly learned here. A sales team wants to use Prompt Builder to quickly draft personalized emails for contacts or leads. Which prompt template type should the team use? Feel free to drop it into the chat. A, sales email, B, field generation, or C, record summary. Any votes? Nice, you guys are listening. It's A, you got it. Okay. So, Mariah, I don't know if you want to stop there, but that's to our Q&A part of the session. First of all, excellent presentation. Thank you so much. I thought this was very helpful. I feel confident that I see everybody's reactions here as well. Do we have any Q&A related to the presentation itself? No Q&A, but I did get the reference to starting from scratch and Thank love you. the inside joke. It was perfect. <laughs> Appreciate that. I Glad agree. you caught it. <laughs> I was having my own personal pun party out here. Cloud yeah. cakes, cloud cakes. Yeah. Uh, I like mom jokes. Very you. engaging. I don't know yeah. if you think about training for a living, but that's what I do. I'm like, oh, she could do it. She would be great. Anyway, that's <laughs> very engaging and everything and eye-opening. So thanks for all the hard work and sourcing those incredible visuals. Love it. Thank you. Shout out to Meredith because the Bing image creator was really fun to work with to create a storyline. And then it gave me a lot of the script, as you could probably tell, to work with Claude and GPT and it was very fascinating to see what they came up with based on the Salesforce help articles and the trails and then tweak it a little bit, be the human in the loop, right? Yep. Yeah, that was good. Katrina, thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and then um, we will open it up from here.